Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of an Auto Trail Navajo. So to open this long locker, you'd use your West Alloy Key, which is where you'd hook the vehicle up. So you hook up points in here and your leisure batteries live in here. So what you can do is turn the keys, release the door, get your hands in, or you can help it up with your foot. You've got your leisure battery in there, but there is a space for an additional leisure battery should you require one in the near future. And you've also got your hookup point. So to hook the vehicle up, you'll get your hookup lead, lift the collar, expose the, the ends so you've got the three pins, and push it on to the motorhome first and then the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead in your hand as it may be dangerous here you have your wastewater outlet so this is anything that you've put down a plug hole goes into a separate holding tank and on the way out of your site you want to drive over the grid motorhome service bay and let the water out you've got no real reason at carry the added weight of dirty water because it's no use once it's dirty get rid of it and in the winter make sure this point is fully drained off so that your water doesn't freeze and cause any damage to the motorhome got some storage in here as well for your, your hookah bleeds your leveling ramps all your wet gear that you don't want to drag in and out of the motorhome So here you have your Truma exhaust vent for your hot water system. So when you're heating your water on gas, this cover needs to come off. If you're heating it on electric, it can stay on. And when you're traveling, put it back on just so that behind the vent it doesn't get dirty off the road dirt. So to take it off, hand on the top thumb in the middle, peel it off, pop this in the driver's door pocket, allows the fumes out when operating on gas otherwise you will get the red light on the dial of the gas water heater switch if the cover has been left on as it doesn't allow the circulation of exhaust gases here you have your external shower point so in the vehicle there's a long hose with a trigger gun on one side and a bullfinch connection on the other you'll be able to put it in Mix your water, either cold or hot, or lukewarm, but make sure that you've had the hot water system on first of all, and you've got the pump on so you get a pressurised flow to this point, otherwise you'll get no water coming out this point without the pump on. This is your cassette locker, so this is where your cassette lives. And all your other lockers open with the habitation key. Give it a push two catches in which releases the door and there you've got your cassette to get your cassette out lift the orange handle slide the cassette out of the vehicle you can either carry it or you can wheel it to the waste disposal point which is normally near your toilet block and then to empty take the cap off press the orange button at the bottom of the cassette which allows a bit of air in stops a glugging when pouring the content of the cassette out once you have emptied the cassette once put some water in and give it a rinse and tip out again before going in with a cap full of chemical which is 120 mil you can either use the cap as a measuring stick or you can just do by eye and pop the chemical down here you can either use blue liquid or green liquid but ask your sites which they prefer you to use for their separate tanks. Then the cassette will just slide back in and it's good to be used. Underneath here, just behind the back wheel, you've got your fresh water drain off point. So very similar to your waste, but this is fresh water, so this is clean water that comes out of here. If you've taken on contaminated water, you'd open this up and drain it off. Or if you were draining the system in the winter completely you'd open it up and leave it open to stop the water from freezing in the fresh water tank in the back you do have your storage 
So you can put all your deck chairs, tables, bits and pieces that you need to carry in your under skirt storage. And then on the back, you've got your high level brake lights, your built in reversing camera, and your spare wheel underneath your auto trail cover. So that would open with the habitation key, the big nut in there, lift the full GRP panel off and there's a full size spare wheel in the back. Coming round to the back of the passenger side of the vehicle, you do have your external barbecue point. So this is an external gas point which is meant for barbecues. So if you're going to use a Kadak or external barbecue, again Bullfinch red connection connects here. You'll need two Jubilee clips to connect the gas hose to the Jubilee, the gas hose to the Bullfinch connection and the hose to the barbecue or Kadak. And this will use the bottles on board instead of carrying an additional bottle to do some outdoor cooking. To fill the vehicle with water, this is where you put your cold water in. So you put your hose pipe into here. It's lockable with the habitation key. Pours into there, wait until it overflows or until you're happy there's enough water on board, which you can see on the main control panel. Carry some hose pipe connections with you because it's mainly just a brass tap on site. So you'll need the hose lock end, the clip on end, the screw on end. Got your own in there, which will show you on collection. On and light, fridge vents. Storage in here, obviously these are your carpets and your cab mat in there. This vehicle has been fitted with the gas low refillable bottle system. So it means that you don't need to remove your bottles once they're empty. You refill them via an LPG fill-in station at your petrol forecourt. So this is where you'd fill from. So you'll get a filler that connects to there, turn the end, pull the trigger back, which connects to the bayonet fitting on the vehicle and press and hold the button on the display panel of the pump until simply it stops and that's it full. And in here you've got your LPG bottles and open that. You need to just come behind the passenger seat, pull this lever, pull it again. And in there you've got two bottles. So you've got one bigger than the other, so you've got a 11 kilogram and you've got a six. To turn the bottles on and off, it's on here. So there on that bottle, there on that bottle, you can see the levels of gas in the bottles via here. And then you do have a manual switch over. So if one bottle did become empty, you can have a reserve bottle. So at the moment, you've got this little nib here and it's pointing at this bottle. Turn that to the other bottle and it's now on the six from the 11. When that goes red, it means you've either turned the gas off or you've run out of gas. But like I say, refill through the skirt via your petrol forecourts. And if you go on the continent with this van, it's a lot easier to find an LPG station than two conventional color bottles. Diesel filler which opens with the main ignition key, so we'd use the main key for the vehicle. It's a lockable cap to fill with fuel. Tire pressure, so five and a half bar on the back, which is 79.5, and five bar on the front, which is 72.3 psi. All your toolkit with a jack and a brace and a torn eye, everything you need to change your wheel be towed off the road is underneath the passenger seat. Engine battery is underneath the cab floor and bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. So you've got all your fluids. So you do have coolant. Power steering fluid, screen wash, brake fluid, oil filler, dipstick for checking the oil, and then to give or receive a jump start, you'd earth off here, 
That's your negative. And underneath here is your positive for giving or receiving a jump start as the engine battery is underneath the car. So to operate your main 12 volt control panel once you're in the van, the far left hand button is your master switch which turns the 12 volt system on and off. So regardless if you're hooked up or not, you should have 12 volt. If you are hooked up, you'll have 230 volt, which you'll get a little icon up here of electric mark to say you are hooked up. Then next to it, you've got your pump button, so you can turn your pump on, but make sure that you've got enough water on board first. And turning the pump on will pressurize the water to the taps, toilet, shower, external shower. Otherwise, you'll just get whatever's left in the lines and it'll fade away. Master switch for the lights and they all are individually switched. Auto light, dimmer, so you can press and hold and dim the lights down should they be too bright. This one is your power transfer button. So at present, it's using the leisure battery. If you press it, it will then use the vehicle battery to operate the motorhome side of the the vehicle so you're potentially going to drain your engine battery by having everything lit up in the motorhome that is only for emergencies i wouldn't advise using it all the time as you can flatten the engine battery the des designated battery for using the motorhome is your leisure battery so make sure it's on battery l and not battery v heated elements in your tank so if you're away and it's potentially going to freeze overnight in conditions like we've had in the last couple of weeks put them on and it'll stop the water from freezing as it won't allow the water to go below freezing scrolling up and down you can view your vehicle battery your leisure battery your fresh water and your waste water levels you can view your leisure battery reading your amps your solar panel current coming in note that your solar panel does go to sleep when you are hooked up because hook up is the main voltage you can set timers and the clock and the alarm there by pressing enter and then setting them time and then you're back to the start with your auto trail logo so next to the control panel, also above the door, you've got two switches. So you've got Truma Ultra Store, Store Water, Truma Ultra Heat, Heat the Vehicle on Electric. This is the Ultra Store on gas, so start off with Ultra Store. This is where the cover needs to come off the outside of the vehicle to allow the fumes out of the flue when operating on gas. Otherwise, you will get the red light that I was talking about outside. And it's very easy to use. So you've got from 30 degrees to 70 degrees, which is the temperature of the water. And you've got a 10 litre boiler on board the vehicle. To turn it on, turn it down to the gas flame. You'll see it's gone green there and it's operating. If it went to red, it means it's failed. So you've either forgot to turn your gas supply on or you've left the cover on. Or you have run out of gas. This side, you've got your auto heat on electric. So if you are on a site, you pay your site fees, use electric as much as possible to heat the vehicle. So one to nine on the black knob. Nine is equivalent to 30. So like I was saying, nine is equivalent to 30 degrees. You've got off here, 2000, which is two kilowatts. Off 500, which is half a kilowatt, and one kilowatt at the bottom. So depending on what the amperage the site gives you will determine whether you use one kilowatt, two kilowatts, or half a kilowatt. On more 16 amp sites, you can use two. On smaller 12 amp sites, you may have to use one kilowatt. And on smaller CL sites abroad, you may have to use even half a kilowatt. But the site will let you know what Ampage they provide through the hookah bleed, and then you'll be able to know if you can use one or two kilowatts. 
If you're using two kilowatts and you're running the microwave and using the electric hot plate and boiling a kettle at the same time, you're probably going to overload the vehicle. So turn it down or turn it off if you can to use other equipment. In the kitchen, across the back of the vehicle, you've got your, your oven and your hob. So you've got one electric hot plate, which is at the back, which illuminates via the red light, which is on mains voltage. So you do have to be hooked up for that to work. Followed by... Three gas hobs. Allow them to all cool so that they're cool enough to place your hand upon before you put your glass lid down. Otherwise, you may shatter the glass lid. And underneath, you do have your grill. And under your grill, you've got your oven. Press in the middle of this panel, you do have your gas isolation valves under there, so you can isolate and apply in should you wish. And you've got your main plug for your electric hot plate. To operate the heating of gas, you have your traumatic fire. So to turn the gas on, make sure you've turned the bottle on first of all. Press and hold. And then if you look in the little pilot hole, you'll see the, the pilot light. And then if you let go, you should hear the engulf of flame, like so. So that is how you'd heat it if you were wild camping and not on an electric source. Or if it was really cold and you wanted to get the van up to temperature as soon as you arrived on site within the first 10 minutes or so, put the gas on along with the electric above the door. This side is your 12 volt assisted fan which circulates the heat around the various parts of the vehicle. If you didn't want that on, you'd have it in this position here, which is just off and it'll convect out the front. You can have it do A, which is automatic, and the thermostat in the vehicle will pick up when it's hit that temperature and cut out, and then when it drops, it'll cut, cut back in. Or you can have it to manual, and you'd have to adjust the temperature or turn it off yourself. 1 to 5 being the fan speed, so you can lower that down for on an evening. Or you can have it on high if it's really cold to circulate the heat around the motorhome. Fan, manual, Convex out the front, automatic, the thermostat will pick up when the vehicle is up to temperature or drops. Gas valve for selecting 1 to 10 on your gas for heating the motorhome. And you can see your flame through here. In the wardrobe behind, if you lift the base of the wardrobe out, there's a hatch. And that's where the boiler is. So your boiler obviously heats the vehicle via the duct, air ducting and also heats the water because it contains 10, litre, 10 litres of water in here at any one time. When it's really cold and you're not using it, it's very important that you drain the water out of the boiler because you wouldn't want the water to freeze and crack the metal cylinder head inside the boiler and flood the vehicle. And you also wouldn't want to leave any water in any pipelines because they are just plastic and you don't want them to split. So looking straight down, down, you'll see this yellow toggle just here. It's currently lying down, so it's currently in this position. You need to stand it up on end. So from that to that, and that'll drain off all the water in the vehicle. It's boiler directly out underneath the vehicle. You'd also then leave all the taps throughout the vehicle open. So kitchen tap, shower tap, hand basin tap. Fresh water, waste water would be open so that no water could potentially freeze and cause any damage inside the motorhome. Then when you come to reuse it, shut the boiler. So lie the tap back down into the position it's in now because we've got water on board. Close the fresh tap, the waste tap and all the taps <coughs> inside the vehicle. Before filling the van via a hose pipe 
until you've got enough water on board circulating it with the pump on through the taps cold you'll get cold water straight away until you start to move the mixer tap to the hot side and it will cough it will splutter it will make funny noises until you get a pressurized flow of water once you've got a free flow of water from the hot side your system is then primed and your boiler it's basically had all the water transferred of 10 litres into here and then it'll come to the tap. But make sure it's drained off in the winter because it's not covered under warranty as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle down. So to operate your Dometic fridge, press and hold here and you can turn the fridge off and on. And then you'll notice you've got three sources. So you've got mains hook up when you are at home and you're pre-chilling it or you're on a site. You've got battery underneath when the vehicle engine is running. It sends a 12 volt feed from the alternator to the fridge, which is designed to keep the same temperature the fridge was at when departing. So if you've been at home, you've pre-chilled it, you're driving to your next site, you're driving to your first site, should I say, it'll keep your shopper nice and fresh or you're driving from site to another site, it's been on. Or you've got gas at the bottom, which you'd use if you were wild camping and had no other way of chilling the fridge. To change through these sources, you need to press this button here, which is mode. So you'll notice if I press, battery's failed because the engine's not running, so there's no 12 volt being received to the fridge. Or you've got gas at the bottom. This is your temperature, so you can have it on as high as five when pre-chilling and then once you pop, pop your shopping in just drop it down to three or four because sometimes it is too cold and it'll freeze your shopping and then one thing you want to do with your fridge when you're not using it and the van's either sat up on the drive over the winter or in storage is leave the door open so press pull the pins out and it'll stop the door from shutting on itself and allow air to circulate in and out of the fridge in the front lounge of the vehicle, you can either use the two lounge bench seats as single beds and you can get a little bit more width by removing the backrests. Or if you want to create that large king size bed, slide them forward in the middle and then pull them base, put your back rests in, let them fall into place. And there you've got your large king size bed. You can turn them upside down so you get the flatter surface to sleep on, the backs of the cushions, or you can put the backrest in the middle. It's entirely up to you. It fills the space and it makes the bed regardless of which way you do it. To use your toilet, making sure that the pump's on as the fresh water flush comes from your fresh water tank. <laughs> And your flush button is here this blue button so press and hold the blue button before you use the toilet and the fan will kick in to stop the fan just press it till it goes solid instead of flashing press and hold the flush button before you do use the toilet and put a small amount of water in the bowl because there's a seal between the cassette and the blade and you don't want that to get stuck so that's why putting a bit of water in it'll keep it lubricated and not getting stuck on the bowl you've got a grey lever slide that to the right you can now use the toilet once you've used the toilet give it a good flush and slide this back to the left to isolate when the cassette is full, you'll get three green lights underneath the cassette diagram on the back of the toilet there. And that'll indicate that it's full and it's time to take the cassette out, empty it out, flush it out and replenish it with chemical. And then if you did want the assisted fan to come back on, you just press until it starts flushing and that will help with smells. 
and circulation and then to stop it you would just press it till it goes to a solid light and that is it stop make sure before you travel that you tie your shower screen back so that it can't cause any damage when you're driving with the turnbuckle at the top here so in the cupboard directly behind the driver's seat is where you'll find your EC 500 power supply unit so first of all, you've got a system shutdown button here, this black button. So you can turn that off and that will isolate all 12 volt system when you're storing it in the winter. But note, it also turns off the radio as the radio is wired through this consumer unit. So you'll not have no reversing camera or radio if you go to take the van out for a drive without this being switched on. Duplicated from the control panel here. 12 volt fuses which are all listed on this list here what they do what the rating is and what the color is of the fuses carry some spare fuses with you just in case a fuse does decide to blow randomly you can replenish the fuse when you're away and solve your issue this side you've got your main trip tester your rcd and your mcbs for your various items if you're struggling to get power and you want to know if it's the site or if it's what the vehicle trip the van if the van trips you're receiving power if the van doesn't trip you're not receiving power up here you've got these buttons here so you've got your space heater so that needs to be pushed in for you to then use the control above the door to heat the vehicle on electric your charger of course charges the leisure battery and the vehicle battery when hooked up and your water heater there's no other switch for the water heater apart from in here so if you wanted to heat the water on electric turn this on if you haven't got any water in the vehicle make sure this is turned off like so otherwise you can't burn the element out in the water heater but what you would do is just leave it as it is hook it up the only thing you'd ever need to turn off is the water heater one if you are using it without any water in so if you're charging it over the winter on the drive keeping the leisure battery topped up just turn this one off you've also got the entertainment switch here you need to turn that on to operate your drop down monitor for your television 